Okay. Um, thank you for being here. Um, does anybody know who, what is uh, MQTT? Okay, sort of. Oh. So you are in the right talk. Andreas yeah. Schreiber is here to explain. Thank you, Andreas. Okay, hey, thanks. Um. Yeah, welcome to the talk. Um, MQTT is kind of new for me too. It's like a technology for messaging between things. Um, I will explain how I came to using MQTT, how I came to the word Internet of Things and stuff. And I will show in this talk how we can exchange like messages with MQTT and um, of course with Python code. So just to introduce me a little bit, my, so I get money for working for the German Space Agency. This is like, um, uh, like German NASA. Um, we do many different stuff there, but um, one of the things is we do like app development and a lot of things with Python. Besides that, I founded a company, Medando, where we develop health apps and quantified self apps. And actually, I'm using Python since 1992, when I read uh, as a student in the internet about a new language, which looked a bit weird with indentation and this stuff. Uh, but it was very promising for me in my problems, like problems like converting data, data to GNU plot format and so on. So today, I'm kind of like um, involved in, in organizing events in Python. I'm organizing the Python for high, um, high performance computing workshops in the US. And I'm um, organizing the PyCon Germany in October in Cologne. So um, why am, what do I have to do with the Internet of Things? What I'm actually doing is, is self-tracking. Um, the, the term is like quantified self. A lot of people in the world now are measuring their selves, values about their selves, like, like um, the weight, blood pressure, um, um, oxygen, blood oxygen, like um, food intake and all this stuff. Um, they do that with, with sensors and different kinds. There are many, many sensors on the market. Almost every day new sensors coming out that you can attach to your body. Um, and of course, it's with smartphone apps. Um, a couple of examples. One example is like this Fitbit um, step tracker. It's like in this size, you can attach it to somewhere to your trousers or put it somewhere else, and it counts your steps and your sleep quality and so on. So this is one one thing what I what I'm using. And the next thing is like a Nike shoe band like this. It's also a kind of activity tracker. It tracks also steps. It's not as precise as the Fitbit thing, um, but it's still okay to like get an impression of your daily activity. And another thing that I really need, need to use is a blood pressure measurement. Um, I came to this topic of health apps and health and quantified self because I had like a stroke a couple of years ago and I have to um, I have to take care of my health and my blood pressure and and so on and so I have always a blood pressure meter with me so actually in real life I, for traveling I use a smaller one than, than that on the on the slide just for the for the wrist it is okay it has an um, this one has only an USB interface the one on the side has a new, um, Bluetooth interface and it can send the the data automatically to like a smartphone app. And I'm doing self-tracking with the um, most popular device today, and this is the smartphone. Uh, the smartphone is not only for like doing stupid things like telephone calls, calls or SMS. It's also for tracking sleep. For what I'm doing is um, is um, tracking my coffee intake, just, this is just very easy, just a button on the, on the home screen, if I press there, I have record my, my coffee intake, um, I'm rec recording my medication intake, and I'm recording my money expenses, and sometimes a couple of other things too. Um, so the smartphone is a really, really um, 
fantastic device for doing these things. You can also do like analysis on it with graphs and so on. And that is also what we are doing in our company. We develop health apps like the blood pressure companion for tracking blood pressure and analyzing blood pressure uh, or weight companion for, for um, tracking weight. And well, actually today, people like me or other like self trackers, I know there are some others in the room, I saw you, um, are, have well, many devices. And one of the problems is how to, how to exchange data between these devices or how to, how to um, send data from devices to like a server or to a smartphone app. That's a problem and it's getting um, more and more important because um, as I said, in the future, more and more devices will get into the market. And I, I, I think, I guess, more and more people of all of us are equipped with these devices. So I know people who have like, like 10 devices on their body somewhere. Only, I, I also know people who, was, who have an um, implant somewhere inside, but just some kind of research, research project. Um, and this will, this will grow. So we will like um, migrate to some kind of Borg nature or so in the next years. And that's not far away. It's not far away. Um, so that leads exactly to the term Internet of Things. Um, so actually, in the future, we are not like humans anymore. We are kind of things. That's one interpretation of it. But the Internet of Things is, um, well, a connection of many, many, many devices. And we speak of billions of devices which are connected um, through the Internet. Well, actually, the connection can be, it can be physical objects like these physical devices or virtual representations like re representation of some state or, or some other thing in software or as in another device. Well, um, in the Internet of Things, the, the well, perfect view is that everything has a unique identifier. You can like address it with an address space and messages to it, receive messages from it. And they interact. So basic principle of the Internet of Things is that devices interact between each other without any need of humans in, in between. So these, and things are like things like embedded embedded controllers. Like yeah, I mean most of you have seen this this kind of stuff like in Raspberry Pi. This is kind of an embedded controller that you can build into under other guided devices and um, control or measure things. And also sensors, sensors that, that um, measure like temperature, humidity, um, light and so on. And actuators, actuators are things like, like printers and so on or doing things who are doing something, who, who make like physical movement in the real world. Yeah. These are the things, and they, it's already some, in, in, in some parts of the world it's already happening that, that things are interacting. Um, it's very common in, in closed systems like in cars or in, in, in planes. There are a lot of things for different parts and they are all interacting and building the whole system already. Uh, but, the, but this will grow and um, so there's some prediction about the number of things that are connected to the Internet of Things in the future, and there's a prediction of about 50 billion things by 2020. To a massive number of small devices that are connected. And well, if we have many devices, um, and the devices should interact and speak to each other, we need some kind of um, communication inter infrastructure. Well, um, there are many possibilities for realizing something like that. What I'm, so the general term for that is like machine to machine connectivity. Yeah. And I don't know how many protocols are there for machine to machine connectivity, but I want to focus to one protocol and this is MQTT, MQ telemetry transport protocol. It's a machine to machine protocol originally developed by 
by, um, by IBM. It, the architecture behind it is like publish and subscribe architecture, sending mes messages. MQTT was designed to um, not expect good networks because many small devices and sensors are not connected to um, um, high bandwidth networks, but to like um, very, very slow or sometimes broken low bandwidth networks and um, sometimes with high latency too. Yeah? And so the protocol implementation or the proto protocol um, yeah. um, specification of, of MQTT doesn't expect a good network. So it can use a good network if it's there, that's no problem, but it doesn't expect it. So it also doesn't expect um, much co computing resources on the different devices. So you don't need like a full high power CPU to like send messages or, or receive messages. It works very well on devices like Raspberry Pi or Arduino or, or similar single chip computers. Um, it provides quality of service. So you, standard cases, um, if you send a message, um, it doesn't matter if, it's, it, if it arrives somewhere or not but you can raise the quality of service level so that it will be delivered in any, any case. Yeah? And this is especially useful for if you have like good networks um, and um, very, very clear defined environments. Where the MQT protocol is very easy to implement. It's also um, was an important requirement for that. So, yeah, more or less the same as a picture. Um, so the basic principle with MQTT, you have a broker and clients um, register at the, at the broker. Um, they subscribe either to topics or they can publish topics. And I will explain topics later, but um, the messages um, are published by clients via the broker and received by other clients which subscribe to certain um, topics. It's very easy, that's like, I guess most of the messaging protocols or many, many messaging protocols are working. Um, yeah, it works, you can do like um, bridging of brokers and while well, this concept is, um, um, works very well, um, the MQTT protocol like, is like one to many message distribution over the TCP IP. That's the basic principle. Um, it notifies clients if they disconnect abnormally. And the message format is really simple. You have a fixed two byte header. Then a variable header with, for some message types and the payload. Some kind of data or the, the topic itself is a payload with the message. Um, it, yeah. So the topics, this is the kind of thing that you register for. Um, so messages in MQTT are published on certain topics and you don't have to configure anything on the broker or anywhere. You just have to publish your data, your payload, on a certain topic. Topics are like hierarchical, like in the file system, with a slash, a separator, like this, like my home temperature in the kitchen would have this topic. Know, my home, in my home, in my house, my temperature in the living room would have another topic. The payload with this topic could be maybe the temperature in Fahrenheit or Celsius or whatever. And I can do like send the, message, the temperature of another location, like my server and the temperature of the server. That's a very common use case. So in our labs, the most server, server rooms are equipped with um, Raspberry Pis and temperature sensors, and they are sending around the temperature values with MQTT. Um, yeah. So implementations of MQTT, 
Um, so IBM was specifying MQTT, and of course they implemented the first the first broker and server for MQTT is IBM Web Sphere MQ. Um, but there are many other implementations. RSMB, really small message broker. Mosquito, which I explain later. Eclipse Power is a Java implementation, which has an Eclipse View 2, MQTT JavaScript. Um, there's Apache Act Active MQ supports MQTT. Rabbit MQ supports MQTT messages and Hype MQ. So rather new, I don't really know it. So there are also like client libraries for um, for MQTT um, and C, C++, and Java, Python, Perl, PHP, Ruby, and many, many other languages currently. There's a web page, mqtt.org. Um, you find a, a, a software page with all the libraries that, are, that the people know of, and um, it's growing from time to time. So an interesting broker implementation is Mosquito. Well, well the most awful thing on, of Mosquito is the logo. Mm -hmm. So this is not nice, but the broker itself is, is great. It's um, implemented in C. Source code is in bug, Bitbucket. It's, um, uh, I think it has a BSD license. And there are many binary packages for, for like Linux distributions and so on. And well, to start with Mosquito, um, for example, on Debian or so, you can just install it with apt-get install mosquito, and then you have the, um, the um, mosquito broker already running on the system. Or you can start um, the mosquito broker by hand with mosquito and give him a config file with certain settings. So this works on Linux and Windows on Mac and Raspberry Pi, Arduino, and many other um, devices and systems. Um, the broker itself is very, very convenient. As it has very low like memory usage. Um, it's good. Um, I don't really know how it scales for really large systems. So it, I, I don't think that it scales for billions of things. But Today, m most people don't have billions of things right, that they want to connect. Right? So the broker itself had a status interface. The status interface is also like so it's, it's, uh, they are messages with a certain topic. All topics that start with this are status messages. You can subscribe for, subscribe for status messages. And then you will get like the information. For example, the number of messages that they ha has been, uh, that has been sent since the broker has been started, or the number of subscriptions from clients at the current bro broker, yeah? or the uptime of the broker. And I don't know what else. I guess there are about 30 different status um, message types or topics. Um, if you want to start with Mosquito and don't want to install your own um, like broker, you can use test.mosquito.org. This is a public Mosquito MQTT server um, with this web interface. Um, with so, um, actually, what I forget to what I forgot to say is Mosquito works on network port um, one eight eight three. And you can also enable like SSL or encryption on, on, and configure any port that you like. So, um, yeah, you can use that. Um, but well, real programmers use Python. And so there's, of course, a Python interface for Mosquito. The Python client model, model which, comes, which comes with Mosquito is like a single file, a pure Python imp, um, implementation of the, of the MQTT um, protocol. It allows publishing and receiving of messages. And um, with it, using it, you have to like um, define callbacks to do to, to, to things for receiving messages and so on. And I show you an example. Um, Python code. 
this is how we subscribe for a topic on an MQTT broker. You know, you just import Mosquito and then you define a callback function on message and if um, the message arrives, um, this callback function will be called, of course, and this function just prints out the message topic and the message payload. <coughs> well, we instantiate then a Mosquito client instance and register the callback function. In this case, in this simple program, I just um, connect to the test Mosquito server and I subscribe here in this code, this is the hash, this stands for every topic. So if I would start this program, it prints all the, all the topics and all the payloads that are being sent to the server. So how does it look like? Where's my... No? Subscribe, this is the program that I had. And this is currently... Um, happening on the Mosquito test server. You see some kind of Fraunhofer Institute in Germany is using this test server really often for some kind of motion data, I don't know. So anybody can use it. And a couple of other people are, are, are sharing their temperature values to the server and well, I'm, no, I'm now sending um, Test message, this is here. I'm going to publish it, um, a topic. Yo, Python demo, hello world, the usual well, example. Um, I can publish many more of them. Other people see that. Uh, energy carbon. Oh. Sometimes they are very interesting messages, and I guess some companies are using it for production mode. So <laughs> it's, it's sometimes really nice. It's, when I started using MQTT and playing around with it, it was more fascinating than any TV show in Germany. <laughs> really. Well, and I don't know if the NSA is like subscribing to MQTT messages. So where's my, my slides? So I was sending a message. Uh, it, on a topic, and well, the code for sending messages is really simple. Of course, we have to instantiate a Mosquito client, connect to the server, and then just publish on a topic with a certain payload. And the number one is like the quality of service level. You can just ignore it for now. Really easy. Um, there are a lot of tools out there for like uh, using and playing around with MQTT. Um, they are all also on the website, software website of MQTT. Um, for example, in the web interface MQTT.io, um, the Eclipse Java library and Eclipse views, and macOS app, which, which is not very good, but it, well, it's um, good for debugging or so. And so the web interface MQTT looks like that. It's nice, you can connect to any server, not only to the test server of MQTT, of, 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 Mosquito, um, and then subscribe to certain topics. So if I would subscribe to EuroPython slash demo and send a publish, um, then I get the, the payload here. That's very easy. So the Mac client looks like this. It's a little bit strange for me, but I don't, I don't use it either. So in our company, we are using um, um, Mosquito for like uh, sending out health values, weight and blood pressure measurements. And for testing this stuff, we wrote a couple of clients for Android. And so also Mosquito, the Python implementation of Mosquito works fine with, with Kiwi on Android. And um, it's just a single file you can put into the um, Kiwi directory and build your stuff and then um, you can, you can um, use MQTT on Android very easily. Um, yeah, and another client, a very special client, is Xifly or whatever it is pronounced. Uh, it's like so well, the marketing name for it is a public cloud for the Internet of Things. You can like publish messages to it, and it will display the messages in some kind of charts. You know, this is some really 
convenient tool if you like to some kind of visualize your, the mes um, your, your messages somehow. For example, um, you're using it for, for <coughs> visualizing the number of registered uh, clients or the number of um, well, sent or received messages. Yeah? Good for status, dis um, for the status information. Um, but I think this, this was free, actually, but I think they're going to now, now, now going to change the business model, and I think you have to like pay in the future for that. Yeah, so um, some examples, more real-world examples, very, very simple examples, which are stripped really down to the basics. Um, so I just, the first example that I want to show is not actually on the slide. This is, oh, this is this one. Um, the Facebook messaging, I don't know how many people are using Facebook messaging. I guess if you looking in, in the world, I heard that a lot of people are using Facebook and their messaging, and they are using also MQTT as a message, messaging protocol. Um, so, okay, so two, two examples that I want to show is like the basics of home automation using an Raspberry Pi and um, implementing push notification or push notification service for Android. And so home automation with Raspberry Pi is, um, the basic principle is you're getting sensor data, the sensors that are connected somehow to the Raspberry Pi, and I'm using the one-wire um, interface for connecting the sensors. The one-wire is a single-line bus system, bus system um, very low speed, very uh, low overhead of data. There are many se sensors on the market which um, implements in hardware the one-wire interface, for example, for temperature, voltage, light, humidity, and so on. And well, if you can connect it, you can connect from one wire to the laptop or to Raspberry Pi via a USB adapter. Like the, um, an example, the temperature sensor that I'm using looks like this. This is um, um, from, from the website iButtonLink. You can order it. It's, the, the real size of this is like that. That's the size, quite large actually for a simple um, temperature sensor. The, actually, this model has also a light sensor on it. Yeah? And then you can connect it via this small cable, and this is the USB adapter. Nothing spectacular. You can connect it to like any laptop or so. And you can connect many devices in a row. It has two to um, one wire plugs in it, and you can you connect as many as you like. For example, in our server rooms, we have about 50 or, or of them connected in one row, and then there's one USB interface and a server, and the server collects all the data from the 50 temperature sensors. It's very convenient. It costs about, um, poo, I don't know, actually, um, I think so between 10 and 50, and 15 euros, I guess. Um, there are also a couple of sensors which looks different. This is a sensor which um, is a little bit smaller. It's also good for, like, um, if you want to measure temperature inside of something else, you can stick it into, into something and so on. Yeah, and... Um, other sense, yeah, well, um, and the next thing that you need is Mosquito and Raspberry Pi. This is also very easy because there are free compiled packages of Mosquito for Raspberry Pi. You can just install them, start the broker if you like, or, or just start clients. And the next thing is if you really want to, like, um, send temperature measurements via, via MQTT, you of course need temperature from one wire, and there are, for Python on, on Linux and on Raspberry Pi, there are at least two, um, two interfaces for doing that, two libraries, the one is, one is open, one, open wire file system that mounts the um, different 
one wire devices in the file system and then you can access them like regular files. And so another one is Digitemp, quite old C implementation of an interface for one wire. And there you have a classical like, um, API and there's a um, Python API, Digitemp Pi that you can use. So impl implementing things like getting a temperature from a one wire device and sending it via MQTT to the world is also very simple. You just open like the file, in this case on my Raspberry Pi, the file passes like slash mount one wire and then there is the identifier of this particular device. And then um, this is the directory name and then there's maybe the file name temperature. And then you can open the temperature and read the content of temperature and this is always the current temperature of this, this sensor. This is, um, this is the basic principle. The rest is, well, standard. We open MQTT client, connect to a server, and then publish this temperature that we read out of the file to MQTT. And so that's all the code that you need to publish your, your temperature values. Well, actually, I couldn't get to run the Raspberry Pi with wireless here, so I couldn't do an online demo, but if I connect it, um, when I connected it two days ago, yeah, I had the YoPython demo temperature topic with um, this value, 13, and here's another value with 80. It's like a little bit heating, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, this, this works. So, um, <clears throat> this for this example. Another example is Android push notifications. Um, this is the reason why we started in our company from using MQTT because we are doing like um, health apps and we wanted to, um, to have push notifications or push information to the devices. And we decided not to use the standard push notification mechanisms of, of Android or, or Apple or Microsoft. Um, there's another reason for that because we want to build like an infrastructure based on MQTT for sending around um, like quantified self values, not only to like Android or, or um, iOS devices, but also to other servers and so on. That's the broader picture of that. But the basic principle for implementing like Android push notifications, especially for like quantified self crashes is like, um, well actually the gadget like, like the uh, Fitbit or, the, or Nike, they're sending um, the measurements somewhere in the cloud to the to servers of the, of the manufacturer of, of Nike or of Fitbit and so on. And these companies are providing like APIs for that. You can register um, at the API, you can register your application to access the API, and um, then you have to register callbacks on this API to get notifications about changed values or about new values. What we did is we used a an, an, an Django app that registers at the different APIs of the different manufacturers, and the um, Manufacturers like Nike and um, and um, Withings are calling the Django app, the callback, and um, the Django app just sends MQTT messages. And well, on Android, this is the um, another client. On Android, we have a Java client for Android that uh, subscribes for our topics and receives the notifications and display displays this to the, to the user. And again, the same as same as a picture. Um, the principle is, can you see the mouse? Yes, we have to, um, the Android phone, which, which registered itself at the Django messaging app, um, this registers itself as a callback. The gadget devices send messages to the servers of the vendors. The vendors call the callback, and the Django app sends out via MQTT a message to the, back to the Android devices. This is not spectacular. This is like almost any um, 
um, push notification system works. Yeah. Um, implementation actually includes, in this case, some OAuth stuff because authentication on the different vendor APIs is um, protected by OAuth. And actually, most complicated part, part is the, was the Java client for MQTT on Android. The lines of codes for this Java part, just for the one client, is about um, three times the whole Django app. That's visual observation, I guess. But to be fair, it, it, it contains a lot of error handling because this is the interface that we present, present to the end user, and there must be a lot, lot of um, um, error handling and um, reconnection strategies if the connection to the MQTT broker is lost and so on. So if you're going to implement something like that, this is surely the most um, complicated part. So the deployment, we, we did deployment just on Amazon Web Services for our production use and this just works, you know, on, because it's on Debian machine. So the implementation of the callback is just, again, very simple. Uh, I'll, um, this is just the, like the main code. Um, in the Django app, we have like the, the this is for the visiting scales, for example. In the Django app, we had, um, we have like a database with the registered devices and users that are using these scales or the health devices. And um, so if in call, the callback is, is called the information that is sent by the, by the API or by the manufacturer is like, a user ID, and then we are sending, we are looking up the user ID and sending a message to all the devices that belongs to the user. So um, a user can have more than one, like Android phone, and register all of them to um, weight measurements, for example, on, a, on, on one single weight scale. It's no problem. Um, so the rest is Easy, we have a topic, weight, a Medando weight companion slash, slash weights, and then there's the user ID and the device ID. And the payload is like the start date and the end date. Um, this is sent by the, um, by Wissings. This is the start date of the, and the end date. And in between these two dates are all the changes that are happening in the last um, update. Okay, if we use this, if you, on the server, Messages look like this, um, like the topic with user ID, device ID. I think this is, I hope this is my device ID currently, not from any customer. And started an end date. Very simple, this is the message that is sent via MQTT. And to get the actual weight value, in this case, for the weight scales, the Android app calls the API of, of these things, of the manufacturer of the weight scale, and gets the actual weight value. So this is, um, I don't know if you've seen this kind of weight scale, this is in these things um, um, body scale with um, wireless LAN. If you, if you measure your, your weight, it sends the, your measurement to the, to, the, um, to the cloud of the company and um, yeah, when we receive the notification on Android, we just um, show something like that in the notification. And then the app do some analysis with the values and whatever. Um, okay, but for the uh, as build is like a small status page for viewing what is happening on the server, a small Django application, which include like graphics um, provided by Xifly, the services that I presented a few minutes ago. It's a very easy way to like build a status page for your, for your applications. Um, yeah, that's all what I wanted to say. Time is running up. Of course, I know there are other message broker systems, um, other push notification services. That's, that's very clear. But MQTT is very lightweight. And uh, we found out that it's very easy to implement clients with it, especially in Python. So that's the reason why we um, decided to stick with it and not to try other message focus systems. And currently we are working on other projects, other, other applications 
not only in our company Bedando, but also at the German Aerospace Center, which are using MQTT for wise stuff. For example, the, we are doing like currently an app for our casino for like daily menu uh, and all the information from the from the from the chef in the kitchen is sent via MQTT messages to hopefully all of our well 7,000 employees. Um, yeah, do you have questions? Hi, uh, thanks. That's very good. Um, the, do you do authentication? Like, do you have something like TLS support or in Mosquito? Yes. Or yes. Find certs? Okay. TLS is. Uh, and we are actually for production we are using that. Yeah. It was wasn't just wasn't in the simple examples on the screen. Hi. Uh, for the uh, abnormal disconnect uh, notification, how does it work uh, from the from the broker point of view? Um, so. If you're using MQTT, there must be a, like a network socket open, and the broker can detect if the network socket is closed, as in usual network network um, codes, and then it sends back like a, um, a message back to the um, to the client that you can receive. Hi. Can you just repeat the port that it typically uses? I didn't catch it in time. Sorry? The port? The you port. The port the number, number is yes. 1883. Okay. Thanks. Uh, I have a question. The, be, because it's called MQ, does it... Does it um, provide any kind of safety that the messages actually do get pub published or do get to the broker? Say, does it queue the messages if the network is down? Yes, if you like. If you, if you raise the quality of service level. So you have there are actually three levels and the highest level, then it's guaranteed that the message is provided. So if you have the lowest level, then there's no guarantee at all. It depends on your environment, what you like and so on. Um, as far as I understand, um, all the um, interface between the, the low-level device and the mosquito broker must be handled separately. I mean, if you have uh, serial or RF or uh, yeah. Zigbee, whatever, you have to manage by yourself. Yes. Yeah. yeah, you have to get the information from the hardware devices yeah. and put it into the payload of... Hello. Uh, I saw that the, the key of the, um, the message is like a path. And uh, if you subscribe to one part of the path, do you get all the, the key uh, in the tree? Or, um, um, yeah, you for get, example, you, 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 get, you get the things that you are subscribing for. You can just subscribe to the, to the complete path, the complete topic. Or you can just uh, subscribe to a sub to a range of topics. If you like, use the hash sign. If you just like, for example, subscribe to um, your Python slash hash, and you will get all topics, all messages with this, with, which starts with your Python. Okay, so you have to to put the hash to say explicitly that you want everything inside. Yes. The, okay. Thanks. Yeah, I can. Maybe I can show it if it's. Uh, So actually, this this example this is running is such an example. It just um, uh, cut, uh, <coughs> this subscribes to a hash, and then it gets everything. And um, if I could, um, I just use VI. I can subscribe to. Uh, let's see. Uh, 
I, I used the past sys. This is the um, system status information, and I get only the messages for system status information. So, yeah. And that's the part that you have to think about when you're using MQTT. You must be clear what is your message or your topic structure. You know? Any more questions? Okay, yeah, thank you, Andreas. Thanks.